the next speaker is Dr. Amra Abdel Wahab. He's going to talk about combined effect of diabetes and hypertension on brain health. Dr. Amra. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the uh, organizing committee for uh, inviting me for such an elite scientific event. Uh, in the next 15 minutes, I try to uh, cover the subject of combined effects of the recent hypertension on brain health. Uh, I'll talk about the prevalence isolated effect of diabetes on brain health, hypertension on brain health, and combined effects of diabetes and hypertension. And finally, what we can do for uh, that, such a patient. Uh, hypertension affects 70% individuals with type 2 diabetes, and uh, type 2 diabetes have 2.5 times risk for uh, 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 to occur in hypertensive individuals and in normal tension. Uh, for every 20 millimeter higher systolic blood pressure and 10 millimeter higher diastolic blood pressure, uh, there was association with 58 and 52 higher risk for type 2 diabetes, respectively. The risk of all cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality is increased in those with both diabetes and hypertension compared to those with hypertension or type 2 diabetes alone. For each 10 millimeter mercury reduction for systolic blood pressure or off systolic blood pressure, that is associated with 12% reduction in the risk of any diabetes related complication, 15% reduction of diabetes diabetes related deaths. 11% reduction of uh, MI and 13% reduction of microvascular complication. Now, I want to talk about the effects of diabetes on brain health. The diabetes has a metabolic effect and a vascular effect. The metabolic effect may be classified into acute and chronic. The acute one, like hyperosmolar, a coma, a ketoacidosis. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm not going to discuss this. I'm going to discuss the chronic complication. I start by type 1 diabetes. The, for type 1 diabetes, the complication may be related to date of start of type 1. If the patient developed type 1 below or before 7 years, you have uh, severe effects on his mental health and memory. This is because hyperglycemia affect hippocampus and uh, lead to hippocampal injury. There is also reduction in the gray matter. There is changes in the white matter and microstructure. There is brain atrophy and then finally neurocognitive dysfunction. This is the structural effects of hyperglycemia on the brain. Decreased volume and less growth of cortical gray matter, decreased white matter development, slower hippocampal growth, lower overall intellectual function, lower cognitive scores, impaired executive function and learning and memory. This is for hyperglycemia and type 1. I'm going to discuss the mechanisms later. Hypoglycemia also affected the brain with lower levels of gray matter density, small volume, volume of gray matter in left spirotemporal region, and the white matter, there is reduced gross variety of softer cortex and cerebellum, poor performance of all cognition and poor memory performance. This is for type 1. Still, there is another factor, the blood glucose variability. The blood glucose variability induced oxidant stress and inflammation lead to central nervous system 
system cell dysfunction with endothelial cell dysfunction and blood brain barrier dysfunction and finally neurocognitive dysfunction. As for type 2 diabetes, we have several mechanisms. Even before the, the development of diabetes, a diabetogenic diet is injurious. A high uh, uh, fat content or high fructose and fat, uh, uh, or high fr fructose content induce hippocampal injury and hypothalamic injury. Glucotoxicity, advanced glycated endoproteins, polyol pathway, protein, protein kinase C, all these mechanisms are activated in hyperglycemia. This occurs also with type 1. Synaptic dysfunction and defective neurotransmission, inflammation and gliosis. But the specific for type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance. Insulin resistance on the, layer, on the brain level lead to poor insulin signaling with abnormal mitochondrial metabolism. Now we move to type 3 diabetes. Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is often called type 3 diabetes because of the uh, rule of insulin resistance, brain insulin resistance in the development of Alzheimer's disease. The insulin resistance leads to impaired insulin signals, vascular damage, neuroinflammation, two protein hyperphosphorylation. Two protein is a protein needed for neuron integrity. It's affected in Alzheimer and the presence of insulin resistance. And finally, the well-known amyloid B accumulation that lead to neurodegeneration. El Alzheimer's disease also, in the presence of hyperglycemia, advanced glycate and products, uh, inflammation, and other factors lead to blood brain barrier dysfunction. Now we cover diabetes, we'll go for hypertension. Before uh, we go to hypertension, this is uh, the vascular effect uh, of diabetes on brain circulation. There is increased circulation in right uh, supplementary motor area and decreased cere cerebral perfusion in the uh, middle occipital gyrus, left and right occipital gyrus, codate nucleus, right spiroparietal gyrus, uh, uh, left calcarine, uh, calcarine uh, fissure, and its surround fissure. What hypertension do for cerebral circulation? As you all know, there will be remodeling and hypertrophy. The remodeling and hypertrophy will lead to increased media to human ratio and impede further cerebral perfusion. Moreover, a serious sclerosis has increased in the presence of hypertension. This is also the, 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 the same uh, mechanism for diabetes. So a serious sclerosis is augmented when you, the patient have both diabetes and hypertension. Lipohyalinosis, okay, also in diabetes and hypertension. Altered cerebral uh, uh, blood uh, 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 flow due to disturbed autoregulation. We shift to right in the care. The shift to right means that we need an increased mean blood pressure to maintain the same, same cerebral perfusion. We already said that diabetes disturbs the blood brain barrier. Also, hypertension disturbs the blood brain barrier. So, there is increased blood brain barrier permeability. There is endothelial dysfunction, diabetes and hypertension, there is endothelial dysfunction. Finally, disturbed neurovascular coupling. Neurovascular coupling means when an area of brain is activated, it sends the impulses to the very vascular astrocytes and myocytes to increase vasodilation or to induce vasodilation and increase cerebral blood flow, 
this mechanism is disturbed in both diabetes and hypertension. The final result. The final result, have, maybe have rotary occlusion. If we have middle cerebral artery occlusion, we have brain infarction. There is a uh, microblitz and macroblitz. There is leukoariosis. Leukoariosis is uh, an imaging phenomenon, whereas there is abnormality in the density of paraventricular white matter. This uh, leukoariosis, or ariosis, has the significance of being associated with cognitive decline, the it's a precursor or a high risk for infarction, like lacunar like infarction and microinfarction. Uh, now, the combined effect of both. We already discussed the cerebrovascular problem, and now we are going to discuss what the combined effect of diabetes and the hypertension do. There is association of diabetes with hypertension increase cortical uh, thinning or left inferior parietal lobe, left posterior cingulate, and associated with more cognitive uh, deterioration. The uh, uh, most recent study, the Biobank, UK Biobank study, that patients with both diabetes and hypertension have poorer cognitive function and brain health in comparison with those with hypertension only, and to a lesser extent, those with diabetes only. What we can do to help? For diabetes, it's easy. Treat blood sugar target, A1C, if a young patient below seven, if an elderly is below 7.5%, if your patient is on continuous blood glucose monitoring, he will be uh, 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 managed by a new parameter called time in range, Time and range should be more than 70%, which anti diabetic? Again, metformin proved to be the best. Metformin has a neuroprotective effect. Patients who are treated by metformin have better cognitive function than patients who, who, who are not treated by metformin. Gilibon agnost the same. Doing curtain like terzebatite have been uh, uh, shown to be uh, uh, very good in preventing cognitive decline and preclinical trial. Animal studies showed that DBB4 inhibitor and SGL2 inhibitors may be beneficial. Now, the answer may come from the gut. Prebiotics and probiotics have been uh, reported to have beneficial effect on brain function and diabetics. Possibly by production of some neurotransmitters that are not or are uh, a little bit disturbed in the condition of diabetes. Other modalities like inhaled insulin. By inhaling the insulin, the insulin goes directly through a factory circulation to the brain. Thus, we have a higher concentration of insulin to overcome the insulin resistance at the level of the brain. There is annihilators. Uh, and uh, uh, the cellular receptor agonists, uh, phosphodiesterase, e uh, 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 inhibitors, these are all under trial to prevent this cognitive decline. For hypertension, the problem is a little more complicated. This is the European Society of, of Cardiology and the European Society of Hypertension Guidance in year 2015. For young, you diabetic, you are aiming at blood pressure 130 over 80. For an elderly, it's 140 over 80. For the Egyptian Society of Hypertension Guidelines, uh, the uh, blood pressure of 190 is acceptable, uh, uh, except in the presence of proteinuria, we are aiming to uh, less than 130 over 80. I already uh, uh, attended the debate about whether we have, uh, should we have uh, a regional guidelines or not. I stand for the point of view that we should have 
uh, regional guidelines for every point. The uh, second issue, which I want to raise for our experts from the hypertension, the Egyptian society, uh, hypertension, uh, uh, Egyptian society and uh, our guests from uh, Emirates. If we have a patient with long stand diabetes, 20 years or more, or still younger, uh, for, for example, for age for 50 to 60, do you think that this patient should have the same target like the elderly or like the young? Finally, what are the choices for hypertensive? I have uh, two recent uh, uh, reviews and meta-analysis. Uh, one of them uh, uh, was about the uh, calcium channel blocker, and calcium channel blocker have higher incidence of neurodegenerative disorders and the stroke compared to uh, ARDs and AC inhibitors, higher incidence of dementia compared to diuretics, while calcium channel blocker have lower incidence of movement disorders compared to beta blocker. However, there is a limitation for this study. It's only over two years, so this data should be uh, uh, considered carefully. In another review, uh, there is uh, uh, the, the concluded that current evidence does not support the use of any hypertensive, antihypertensive category as a superior treatment. However, in between lines, when you read this article, you find they are supporting ARBs. They are supporting ARBs because of uh, many, many, many trials and studies have uh, concluded and ARBs and AC inhibitors have a beneficial effect in the neurocognitive uh, decline in diabetic and in hi and hypertensive. They are just accused diuretics. Diuretics is a CSI diuretics, not the uh, uh, aldosterone antagonists. They are accused CSI diuretics by being a little bit have uh, no effect or uh, bad effect on the prognosis of uh, cognition in diabetic and anti and the hypertensive. Finally, thank you. For the sake of time, we are very sorry not to accept more, more questions.